Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We've got to talk about Tropical Depression 18. This is a current view of the satellite imagery. You can see Cuba to the north. Here's Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Central America here. You can see there are some curved bands developing, um, which is a sign the storm is trying to get a little bit more organized. The hurricane hunters uh, are going to be flying in and out of the system the next couple of days. Did find we've got a low-level center right about there where we're seeing some thunderstorms but there's still a lot of dry air it's certainly not a very potent system now but i will tell you over the next couple of days as this moves in this direction environmental conditions are favorable for development in that area so here's the track long range going into tuesday middle of the week probably going to be over western cuba and then moves into the gulf of mexico sometime um, by the end of the week into the weekend so it's not in a huge hurry to move north but there's a lot of uncertainty once the system gets to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, a lot of folks were very storm wary across the Southeast, Florida, the Carolinas. I get it. But remember, it's November. And by the time this gets into the Gulf in another couple of days, it's even later in November. And you're probably saying, well, why does that matter? Well, as we get into November, first of all, water temperatures, while still above average in the Gulf of Mexico, are much, much cooler right now. We're talking marginal temperatures in some locations. And we also have dry air, wind shear, cold front, jet stream. So there's a lot of things as this storm gets further north, the potential for it to be a stronger storm begins to go down. In fact, the Hurricane Center forecast has it as a Category 1 hurricane somewhere around western Cuba and then weakening as it moves north. Now, I will tell you, there is a ton of uncertainty with this system. And I'm going to quickly kind of show you some of the uncertainty we're seeing, especially in the long range with the super ensemble. So... Um, I show this often. I love this graphic because it really kind of shows you not individual tracks, but kind of blends them all together and shows you every piece of guidance available. And you can see there's really good confidence right here. Basically, we expect the system to be somewhere here by Thursday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday. But then look at this huge spread in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, there's a little bit of a hint of more confidence this direction. That's why central to western Gulf seems possible. But then long range, there are there is some potential to move up here now for the western carolinas we don't want this to come any farther east and what i mean by that is we don't want this thing tracking anywhere in this area even if it tracks here or even slightly here anywhere in here that's bad news for heavy rain in the southeast regardless of strength it may not be a wind event but it certainly could be a big rain event now if it goes further west like let's say new orleans west becomes less of a threat for heavy rain if it goes over in this direction and that's something that we have to watch very, very carefully. Let's look at some of the potential track here, and I'll show you what's going on in the steering current. So this is the 500 millibar chart, and you can see the ridge of high pressure off the southeast coast. So there's really only one avenue for this eventually to go in the next five days or so, and it's roughly there, okay? So it's going to get somewhere in here, but the uncertainty, you got a dip in the jet stream here, high pressure right here. So we know it's not coming right into high pressure. It's not going to come right up here. That's the good sign, all right? It's not coming straight north, at least initially. Um, so as we go through time, you see that ridge kind of builds, and you actually see the system right there. See it there just near the island of love, um, south of Cuba there. Then it pushes northwest, and then this is where things get interesting because the ridge kind of flattens a little bit, and the steering currents weaken, which means there's no monster ridge. This upper low is back here, and basically it meanders. So this is why you see uncertainty in the models. Uh, a lot of times people go, well, nobody knows where it's going. Well, we're actually, we are seeing confidence that there's going to be low or weak steering currents. That's something the models will tell you. When there's a big spread, it's not always like a clueless thing. Oh, we don't know where it's going. It's actually the atmosphere telling you there's weak steering currents. When things are weak, then there's nothing to move it. It kind of meanders around. So you'll see big spreads when you get weak steering currents. And that's what we're seeing here, especially into the end of the week. So this is like Friday, Saturday. Um, so possibly somewhere over here, but with this low m moving to the north, it could be down there. I mean, I'll be honest, it could linger in the Gulf of Mexico into next weekend and possibly the week after until something picks it up and moves it north. And because of that slow movement and dry air and wind shear, it's likely not going to be a strong system as it moves that way. But the biggest issue for us is not going to be wind, right? In the Western Carolinas, it's all about rainfall. We have not seen any rain virtually at all since Helene, okay? So what we're watching is if this system comes anywhere near us, we could see this inflow of moisture. And so this is the rainfall forecast over the next couple of days. And you can see this is by far the most widespread rain we have seen since Helene. Now this isn't crazy high numbers, 
This is something normally over a seven day period. Let me go back here. We could handle this, right? Some of these ridges could see an inch or two of rain. But remember, we've got a lot of exposed slopes from mudslides and landslides. We've got a lot of creeks and streams that have been kind of completely moved in different locations. We don't always know how the water is going to flow after an event like this. So it's something to keep an eye on. The one outside chance that this could become more of a problem, as I mentioned, if this storm gets caught up in one of these fronts, let's say this cold front sweeps in here and the system gets pulled into the front and we end up with heavy rain like that. That is probably the number one worry that we'll have to keep an eye on. And so let's take a look at the long range guidance just to see if there's any hints of that at all. All right, so let's just look at one piece of data. Now, this is just one deterministic model. It does not always agree with what the blend of models are, which I'm a big fan of using consensus track as ensembles. But I just want to give you a rough idea on some of the things we're watching the long term. So we go through this week. You can see the cold fronts. There is going to be rain chances this week, mainly just because we're going to start to see southeasterly flow coming off the Atlantic here and moisture coming in from the south. So we're going to see just light scatter showers, nothing off the charts. Certainly we could use the rain. We have a high fire danger. We have drought conditions in some parts of the Carolinas. So we actually could use some rain. We just don't want heavy rain. So we get into the end of the week and something interesting happens. We see some moisture developing over Georgia and South Carolina. Now, as long as it stays there, that would not have a huge impact in the Western Carolinas, but it is something to keep an eye on. If that moisture should shift north, that could be something more to watch. And that's kind of more of a stalled front and southeasterly flow developing. But that looks like it stays mainly the south and weakens. You see our tropical system. Now, again, this is just the GFS. Remember, there's a ton of uncertainty here. Most of the guidance is actually much further west, somewhere in here. So there's a big spread here. But even in this model, you notice it comes north and it looks like, uh-oh. But then watch it kind of fall apart and kind of drift back to the west and go back towards New Orleans. So we get into the weekend. You can see there's some moisture here, but the heavy rain is mainly to our west. Not a huge deal. We go through time, the system gets absorbed by the front this weekend, at least in the GFS, moves north, and then by the end of the weekend, possibly brings us rain. So that's one scenario, and then it moves out quickly. So this is basically Saturday, Sunday. So that's one possibility that it gets pulled up by this first front and then pushes in and out pretty quickly. And by next week, we're back to dry. So even in that scenario, which honestly is probably the, the, the one scenario that brings us the heaviest rain, it doesn't look to be all that overwhelming. But again, we just don't know how much rain the mountains can handle right now because of the destruction from Moline. This is definitely going to be the wettest week that we've seen so far. Um, so I definitely something we've got to keep an eye on. Right now, the forecast, again, like I said, is generally for one to as much as three inches in the mountains, uh, but much heavier to the south. So this is something we'll monitor through the week. The good news is we've got time to watch this. This is not going to happen in the next five days. The first real chance of some heavy rain would be this weekend and then depending on what happens next week. So we'll keep an eye on it. But as I mentioned, as you get later in the season, the good thing about late season storms, they very rarely make hurricane landfalls in the U.S. And the reason is you just have colder water. Again, it's warmer for this time of year. Water's colder, jet stream, winds, dry air. There's just a lot of factors going against tropical systems maintaining themselves. But you could still get tropical moisture which in our case is something we don't want to see.